All right, well, welcome to If Lance Could Kill. This will be the first official non-beta episode of this podcast. This is uh, Knife City Alchemist with... A quickness here. And Reich sitting off to your left. And uh, the sauce, the sauce boss. And, uh, yeah, we don't uh, exactly know what direction this podcast is going to go. Uh, I wouldn't say we're beginners in magic, but I would say we're novices. No, we're noobs. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have a long way to go, but this is kind of a podcast, you know, for for novices by novices, you know. Um, so you know you can you can grow with us and level up with us. Um, but I guess let's uh, let's just do like a little background, like uh, how how we got started in the game. That sound good, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're definitely good. taking a bottom up approach. So. <laughs> yeah. This. So um, you know, we started wanting to play like really nerdy games uh, together, just as an excuse to hang out because you know we all got jobs and girlfriends and whatever. <laughs> So we started playing Risk, and uh, we all liked that pretty much. And we wanted to get nerdy and nerdier and nerdier as we progressed. Not Dungeons and Dragons nerdy. No, that's we're not like there yet. In the not future, there though. yet. That's like when we're sixty. I'm yeah. not going to roll it out. Yeah, but you got to mention that. what kind of Risk it was because it, was, it wasn't just some standard old Risk. That you it wasn't your Risk Legacy. It was. It wasn't regular. Really, it was. It was Risk Legacy. I'm gonna edit that out. <laughs> Here's a plug for Hasbro and his, uh, Risk yeah. Legacy. If you want to be one of our sponsors, yeah. it's uh, uh, seventy nine ninety nine eBay. <laughs> so uh, we started playing that, and uh, you know we were done with that game, and uh, for some reason I got uh, wanting to learn how to play Magic. Uh, I think it was because when I was a little kid, there's this nerd next door to me. And he was like, I don't know, four or five years older. And uh, he was playing Magic. I don't think I ever did I tell you guys about I don't that? think I've heard this story. Yeah, this right, story. Next, right next door. Um, so he tried to teach me how to play, but I was like a little kid and didn't know what the hell he was talking about. And he got like frustrated and like, he was like, ah, oh, screw it, you know? And uh, so like, I think that's why like it kind of popped up in my in my subconscious, like, uh, I want to play, you know? Show that fucker what's up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, I think how. Uh, we started playing. It was my idea, and I downloaded the illegal version of Duels of the Planeswalker <laughs> and uh, the hacked version, and just to learn the rules. And allegedly, stuff. allegedly, yeah, allegedly. Yeah. You Never know, if fault. <laughs> you can't yeah. prove this. Still unconfirmed. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then I was, I was obsessing on it, so I went out and bought an intro deck. We started playing during Gate Crash. By yeah, the way, Gate Crash was a good fucking dude block. I wish I. I'm really upset we missed Ravnica. Ravnica was Gate Crash too good. is all it's all about me, man. Yeah. I love that fucking Simic and the Evolve and the counters and just the just the uh, the, 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 the Boros, theme of the guilds. Uh, you dude. know, I, th- I think we came in like Boros, at a, the perfect fucking time for Magic because it was just like the the amount of cards that we had to choose from or like to work with was just so good, and the quality of the cards were so good. I think also we could like. I think I'm Inst- foiled. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Instead of just coming in on an M set, we came in when we could like associate ourselves with like colors and guilds and kind of yeah. We well, we came at the end of the block. Well, Gate Crash was what the the middle. set the middle the yeah. middle part of the block. So yeah, we came in at a perfect time. So uh, I went and got the Demir intro deck, which was a mill deck. I had no idea. I was just like, I like black. Give me something black. And uh, that's what your mom said. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so. Uh, <laughs> giggity, giggity. <laughs> And then, so, but I hadn't really, I, I mean, I talked about it with these guys, and but I, they hadn't gotten any cards yet, and so I would go to the uh, our local game store, and uh, I remember the first time I walked in, it was so awkward, like, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm nerdy, but, you know, I feel like, you know, I look like a normal guy or whatever, but, like, I walked in, and there's people with, like, you know... Breathing out uh, certified their mouth, nerds. certified nerds. You know, right. when you look at not not the judging, truest. the not, truest, not judging, but you can just tell when you look at them, like nerds, you know. And so I was like, I felt like I walked into their realm, you know, like yeah. I yeah, was, no, I had no moment. status, like not like, at all. You get not pussy on the daily, I don't care. I have a fucking foil, blah blah blah, you know, like <laughs> it, it didn't matter. I was, I was the new. We were the there. lowest of the low when we yeah. first came in, yeah. So I walked in super awkward, and it was cool. They, uh, you know, they they taught me how to play. And they even gave me some shitty like commons and uncommons to you know build my deck with, and so I eventually got these guys into it. And I mean, tell them what uh, intro decks you got. Oh, I got the yeah, I got the Simic. This is uh, Sauce, and I got the Simic one. And I in the beginning they said like yeah, that's the weakest one. Probably shouldn't get that, but 
it, I mean, it sounded good to me. And then I discovered that I love combo decks, and that's my main thing is people have their own thing, whether it be mill or control or aggro or whatever. I love seeing a combo hit off. If I can get, like, three cards on the board that all have that synergy, that is why I play Magic, you know? Yeah, it's kind of, actually, I think it's kind of funny how we, with the intro decks we started with, it's kind of the colors, like, some of us kind of stayed in. Like, I got Gruel. This is right, by the way. And fucking, like, I'm... I'm a gruel diehard now, like red green for life. There's like I'll play I'll play red. I love red too, but it's like You just I, wanna turn big shit sideways. God, I just yeah, want the big ass creatures and just all the trample and just fucking turn it sideways. So if I'm not like attacking them, it's not playing magic. <laughs> I mean, it is, it's, which yeah. is perfect. I'm I'm definitely on your I, side. I feel it. It's like yeah. it's in my blood now. Like if, if you cut my fucking arm open right now, I just bleed red and green out. <laughs> 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 well, uh what I started out with was the is it uh, intro deck. Which That's is, the red. It's blue. red blue. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's is it's more of the spell slinger guild, um, and which kind of carried over to what I'm doing now. Uh, I kind of feel like the podcast was named after my style of play, whereas I play the land go. I play control decks. I love just playing lands and playing instants, drawing cards, just controlling the board and make it. I. I Classify myself as the anti fun police now. Right, you piss me off. He is so off. unfun. I, I, I hate it, his deck. I make people hate playing against me. Pretty much. <laughs> and I mean, I like, I like anything black. Like yeah, anything. Yeah, anything. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Shut up. No, I like playing uh, swamps, um, but anything that has a swamp in it, I love to play. But I love to mill. Like, that's what initially drew me to, because they explained to me, like, oh, milling is like an alternate win condition, and I was like, that sounds awesome, because, like, anytime I milled somebody out, it, like, pissed them off. Yeah. So not like, only can I kill you with creatures, <laughs> but I can mill you out at the same time. Yeah, so I just love being, like, obnoxious and loud. I'm sure you'll you'll get that vibe by the end of the podcast, but... I'm sure they already got it by now. <laughs> so, I mean, I... I I think I'm going to try and force a standard mill deck whenever I can. And that's actually my main deck that I'm playing right now is a Demir Mill. Um, but, I mean, that's like, uh, that's the that's the history of how we got started playing Magic. I mean, we started doing tournaments here and there, uh, like little local game store, Friday Night Magic type of tournaments. Um, yeah, this started, what, back in April of last year, 2013, we started playing? Was yeah, whenever... It? I think April, right? Whenever yeah. Gate Crash was yeah, out. Yeah, whenever that was out. So that was, it's been a little while. So, I mean, we've definitely come a long way. Yeah. I'm right. still a little awkward when I meet people at those places, though. Like, going to the game they, They're all familiar with what's going on. I'm still... Yeah. I still feel relatively new. Like, talking to Fred, I feel like she's a hot chick. Like, he's he's this beautiful girl that I can barely fucking talk to. <laughs> so you, you don't know how to approach it. He knows it. Like, everything, ah. and I have to ask these stupid ass questions. <laughs> like, does this if I uh, if I trigger this, does it does it also affect this? And he just like spits off this super fast answer, you know, all confident. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, know, I guess. I'm sorry for asking, sir. <laughs> yeah, no, no, let's go back and write the ruling table. on the gathering website. Right. Yeah, right. But uh, and then uh, a quickness started doing uh, MTGO. Oh, and yeah. I was, like, against it. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to spend twice as much money, blah, blah, blah. And then I, I got on there, of course. I mean, I couldn't. <laughs> and uh, it works out because my, my schedule, my hours for work changed, and I work, like, afternoons slash night now. <clears throat> so I can't do, like, Friday Night Magic. I can't do all the, t- all the tournaments at the local game stores are when I work. So it's perfect that I can play a tournament, competitive magic, Whenever yes. I want, it's cool. really competitive on online too. Yeah. There's a lot. There's people all around the world that are playing, and they've been playing for however many years or however you know yeah. they have that knowledge and some that people, skill. So yeah, some people this is their livelihood is yeah. play yeah, magic online. Crazy. They make their living off of magic online. Yeah. So and I just mostly like to draft. Like I eventually got like some kind of cheapy standard decks that I just brewed together. But I love to draft. I can just draft whenever I want, and I get new cards, and I might win some packs. That's mostly what I use MTGO for is yeah. to draft. Yeah, I think it's just the convenience too. It's so good. I, I mean, I, I need to start getting back into MTGO because I have like a, a, a red deck wins on it because it was just cheap. But I mean, just be able to play because yeah, you know, it just sucks when you don't have you know scheduled. You can't make it to the Friday night. Like I can never make Friday night magic because by the time they do it at our local store, it's like. I'm already just getting off work, right, right, right. And so I can't, I can't make it even if I wanted to. But there's I mean, a big it's still, factor there. It's still, it's nice to be able to just fucking log in online. Yeah, and plus they're they're starting to bring in all the the different types of formats that uh, Paper Magic supports now. 
Uh, they have the commander decks on there, and it seems like that's going to be more of a thing now. Yeah. Uh, which is also good. Cause so now, check it out. Check it out. Yeah. If, you haven't, if you haven't tried MTGO out, I mean, it's definitely um, it's showing its age. Oh my god! Even so, with the beta version of it, but I mean, it's still. So still when under, I, first, I don't understatement, dude. <laughs> when I first downloaded like the version three or whatever the non-beta is, I installed it and I immediately uninstalled it for the beta because I looked at it and it looked like a fucking '90s computer game, like with the just. I was like, what is this? No, fucking, it does. It does. It's, it's a point and click yeah. card game. Is this it? a it's fucking, like, I didn't expect, like, no bling or big flash or 3D, <laughs> like, special effects, but, like, it looked like you this know, chess game I used to play when I was 12 on the computer. <laughs> like, seriously. It's like, like a, a little, chess master 3000 <laughs> yeah. on DOS. It's a little different, though, coming from Duels of the Planeswalkers when that has all this production value to get yeah. new players in. And then for the serious people, they have this shitty program that you guys, you know, we all love or whatever. It's but like it is bones. funky. Yeah. It, is, it is a fucking disaster but, kind of. Like, Okay, so there's like I don't want to spend too much time on Bash and Magic Online because no, 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 they do no, it all the time. Thing, though, but who does? I, uh, on, on the podcast, everybody, yeah. everyone who plays it bashes it, but they still play it because well, it's like course, the course, only. Course, thing. It's not there for the flash and the pizzazz. Like you yeah. look at Hearthstone or whatever, it's like fucking this Blizzard. They got all this shit together, but I mean, it's just it's not magic. It doesn't have that fucking it's not in magic depth. feel. Hearthstone yeah. feels like a video game where well, yeah. Magic Online feels like a digital representation of the paper game. That's fair. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what. But it's, it just sucks because like you hook them. With Duels of the Planeswalker, and then you're like, oh yeah, you want to get serious? Well, uh, let's hop in a time machine and go back 20 years, and then here's <laughs> yeah. a here's a computer program for you. And like, I don't even Backslash. think Duels of the Planeswalkers <laughs> explains a lot of the the interactions and the phases well enough. Oh, no, 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 like and... I learned the basic interactions with like just how to how a turn goes and little yeah. things, but I learned like the rules from Magic Online. Yeah, like, like that's where I learned like oh. I could fucking target a planeswalker with shock. Yeah. I didn't fucking know that until I started playing Magic Online. Yeah, Magic Online is like fucking. If you want to learn how the stack works and like what the concept of the stack that's is, fair, yeah. that is like fucking the go-to no place. Speculation. Because you go like do the planeswalker. It's like okay, that's cool. I'll learn how like the turn, the phases go. That's awesome. Yeah. But you don't or learn the interaction between like the players and the stack and like how you can play on the stack and you know how how that whole sequence goes. And passing priority. Yeah. That's it's really yeah. Cool. Like I hate in Duels of the Planeswalker you have to hit stop timer. And yeah. then I, I get to think about my card, but sometimes I'm thinking <laughs> and I miss the timer. <laughs> yeah. oh, and then it, cool. it goes goes yeah. away. I'm just like, what is this? Dude, I didn't like fully understand like the stack until like I don't know, fucking a couple of months ago. Like no, I still, I mean like still fully recent. Fully understand the stack. Like, to translate to paper, like when I was playing paper, I, like, I had to stop and, like, think about, like, okay, like, I'm trying to imagine, like, MTGO yeah. in my head, like, okay, what happens? Like, okay, defenders are declared, okay, I get priority, you get, you know, it's like, yeah, like, this happens before this. Like, what, what triggers first? Like, yeah. oh, my God. Like, I feel like I've Your actually... triggers, all the triggers. I finally got, like, the basic, <laughs> like, fucking... The basics down. Yeah, I finally. Think, I don't think anyone knows how the stack works. It's kind of like a... No shit, huh? It's like the fucking Bermuda Triangle of magic. It's like a clitoris. Like, you know exactly. you're going to find it when you get older. Yeah. <laughs> like, right? One day you hope that you'll be you there. You think you found it when you're younger, and then like, 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 yeah. your passes, you're like, damn, I didn't know it then. And then <laughs> passes, I thought I, I knew still, it. I still don't know it. Oh, my God. Like, I know it exists. Yeah. But I heard stories. <laughs> yeah. Like lost lock I think they fucking like... <laughs> yeah. There's an old sea like, captain down at the bar. The bar. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's. Uh, I don't know. Let's touch on uh, the new shit. Yeah, the, the new gods. shit. Let's just, let's do the new shit. I'm first. talking about more than the gods, man. That shit just came out <laughs> yesterday. Well, today the recording is a Saturday, which is what. What's the, the, eight, eight, the eighth? Yeah, and it came out what, the, yesterday, the, yesterday yeah. for public. So uh, I mean, we've been we've been looking at the spoilers, uh, but we actually got. I mean, the whole reason we're meeting up today and doing the podcast is that we're doing a four person draft. Uh, just between the four of us, and uh, so we're gonna actually open some fucking product and get some cards. Um, <clears throat> and me and Justin actually, or me and uh, a quickness over here, uh, went to a midnight uh, like release event yeah. at the store. We didn't play; we just won some oh, you product. Oh, last night or the was it uh, last night? Friday night, Thursday, Thursday, night. Thursday, night. Thursday, night. Thursday night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we went and got some product. We got fat pack. I got. I actually bought some uh, pre-release packs, which were like cheaper per pack. From what I was getting was like yeah. cheaper. Sure, they weren't all born of the gods, but yeah. it was like more bang for my bucks. And the fuck black it. pre-release was cheaper than the others. For some <laughs> yeah, because the black pre-release promo Nobody wanted sucks. It? <laughs> oh. it was like three bucks cheaper, just because. Yeah. I don't know. Probably the value of cards wasn't. Is that the regenerate dude or whatever that is? That's the Eater that, of Hope. It's like six four. 
I, mean, I, I actually one, forget. It, I think it's the it's, one where you you pay like you can five sack. and you sack X creatures. You bring X creatures oh, from the graveyard. Oh, and you pay one. seven and you can bring it back from the graveyard to the right. top of your life. Yeah, that's an expensive ass card to do everything, it's, man. I don't think the second ability is going to be that relevant. Uh, it's just too much because you have the seven to put it back on top, on top of, of the library. library. Yeah, you, you waste your turn, turn yeah, to draw dude. the card, and then you take your turn. All your mana to, to cast it again. I yeah, think it's no gonna fix. be okay in limited, but it's not gonna see like standard. What, what's play. its cost? What's it cost it at? It costs six. Six. The abilities are five, six, and all, seven. All the promo so five, cards. Five and seven are the abilities. Six. six to cast. So it. the Eater of Hope is a uh, five and black, black for a six four flyer. Uh, pay one black, sacrifice another creature, regenerate Eater of Hope. Oh, so like that one. So like that. Well, this was the this was oh, the okay. That's the one I was yeah. talking about at the beginning. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's not bad um, for a 6-4 flyer that can regenerate, whatever. Um, and then the second ability is two and a black, sacrifice two other creatures, destroy target creature. So basically, like, you need, like, tokens. Like, that's what I yeah. see in my head, is, like, tokens are a way to bring back shit from the graveyard. You're going to definitely need to pair it with the inspired token generators. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking, like... If it's because we're just doing triple born of the gods today, just so we can play with a bunch of new cards. New but cards are always better. Like in the full block, like it'll it'll be faster. But I think in triple born of the gods, like it's gonna be fucking slow and clunky, and like you can ha- you can have time to make this thing work in triple born of the gods. I think. Yeah. But in the whole set, like if you drop the whole set, yeah. it's not gonna. Well, I think it's actually better in the whole set or um the block. It's better in uh, Born of the Gods, Triple Born of the Gods, because oh. you have more chances to get the actual token generator. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Whereas it's, if you do the Born of the Gods, Double Theros, you have less chance of hitting them. You might not even hit it, and so the card's kind of dead because you don't have a reliable way to abuse the ability. In Limited, I think there's like a bunch of like... It feels bombier in Born of the Gods. You know, there are like, some there's some good the good cards, some good. Yeah, because everything, a lot of the a lot of the good cards are like really heavily costed to yeah. where it's like almost not worth playing because they're like so heavily six, costed. Six seven mana. Yeah, a lot a lot yeah. of them were like six drops, seven drops. I mean, there's like cycles, you know. So I felt like the Born of the Gods is um, good for Theros. It brings a lot of early game stuff, uh, which is good for like the heroic decks is what you need. You need a lot of those heroic enablers, and it also um, provides a lot of bombs. Like the back end. And like, you know, five, six, seven converted mana costs to uh, help the, the decks that want to go long game. What do you guys to, think of the gods this time around? Um, I think the gods are actually, the the dual color gods are better than the monocolor gods, I think. Uh, just because in limited, when you have a monocolor god, say you're doing triple Theros, um, you get like say a Thassa, but like for pack one pick one, but then you get shut off of blue. Thassa is kind of a dead card then because all you're using it for scry and unblockability because you're not going to be able to enable it. Yeah. But the dual color gods you can get like uh, a Fora, which is a blue white one. It costs one more to turn online, but you could go a Fara and then you can go mono white and still turn a Fara on. Yeah, essentially they cost just one more. To turn online. Oh, that's because, specific color, right? Because yes. with the Mono God, it was... They had one uh, color in their casting cost. Yeah. And then it was five to turn online. Five colorless? Yeah. No, five... Or five. Five devotion. Oh, five yeah. devotion. So basically, it was four devotion, including that card. Yes. So these... Uh, have two colors, so like you know the devotion to either white or blue, but it has a white and blue in its in its casting cost. So basically, you just need you needed four for the four more for the mono gods, and then you need five more for the like dual gods. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, it's not that I think it might be a little bit easier to get these guys online. Yeah. Just because you have the flexibility, the flexibility of it. But I don't think uh, like okay, so the the blue white one. If you're not familiar with the gods, fucking look them up. I don't want to read the whole fucking card. But this one has, uh, the blue white one is, uh, if you, if a, another creature enters the battlefield under your control last turn, draw a card. Like, it's a four drop. So, yeah. turn six, you're getting something back. You're get, you're actually drawing a card. Yeah. Cause it doesn't count itself. No, because unless it, it can come in as a creature, but I don't think you can turn it on. Well, well it says uh, another creature. Oh, another creature, yeah, yeah. So. so turn five, you have something come into play, and then turn six, you actually you see a card. Yeah. yeah. From the guy. It's pretty late, though, I mean, in a standard format, but 
I think limited would probably be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of underwhelmed on the enchantment side of these gods uh, in this go around. I don't know, man. You see Xenagos? Yeah. Oh, well, well, uh, well, he's the best one. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's, let's work what color our, is he? Red, green? Oh, yeah. Let's work our way. <laughs> <laughs> let's work our way up from the shitty ones. I think the next shittiest one is the green, white one. I think the green and white one's the shittiest one, actually. Really? Yeah. I definitely because think that's the shittiest one. It's the shittiest? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, what is it, a five or six drop? Yeah, it's a five it's drop. It's a five, five drop. drop, and then you're going to play a creature turn six, and then you're going to get what? A Dude. land? But by that time, I don't want any more lands. I, right. You know, I don't that want land land. not equal more cards. That land does not equal more creatures. It's oh, going to yeah. cast bigger stuff, but you're already going to be there. You're, I think it's not going to it's not going to ramp anything up that you yeah. need. Okay, okay. So I, I totally agree. It's shitty. But just to play devil, devil's advocate here, what you're doing each turn is increasing your chance to actually draw spells. Because when you cast something, you get to go get a land out of your deck. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you have the chance to draw your bombs, to draw so spells, kind of to come back yeah. in the late game. More, really. so, you, so your late game increases, you know, because you, you have not, to um, shuffle your library, though, once you pull it out, though, right? Uh, yeah, shuffle your library. So I, I feel like I maybe it's not. good, but in a set that introduces Scry, I think it kind of works against itself, because if I'm going to Scry, play land, I'm going to Scry the turn, or I'm going to play something that's Scry. Then you got to shuffle your shit. And then I play a creature... <laughs> Then I have to pull land out, and then I have to shuffle away the the, the scry that I just yeah. did. If I yeah. like to leave it on top, I mean, so the, there is that extra. It's the Lesnia. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna <laughs> yeah. Be bad. There's no way around it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely. I take it back. That is the worst god with uh, the blue white one. You know, second worst. Yeah. And then at least the blue white one, all your creatures say whatever it does, draw a card. It, at least you, it replaces itself in, yeah. in, in a long match where. You're probably going to talk about uh, the Demir God next. Well, uh, Blue Black is kind of a grindy uh, archetype in this set, and that's really helps with it. Well, let's look at these gods in limited and then in standard. You know, so because because okay, so let's just let's talk about the Demir God. So in limited, he's a fucking bomb. Oh yeah, because it's yeah. You're I think play- some, most of these gods. Yeah, are, yes, if you yeah. pull one of these in limited, I mean, you're gonna be playing it. They have effects basically every turn once it comes out, more or less. So but that's, like, that's great. Phoenix is crazy in limited because you're playing a forty card deck, yeah. so you're gonna mill them out so quick oh, yeah. if you have creatures on the board. Oh, you yeah. know? Yeah, if you get them soon enough, then you're gonna get yeah. these high toughness creatures and just keep yourself alive and mill the fuck out of them. Yeah, and it, maybe even get him online so he yeah. can fucking do some milling, but. Like in standard, like no. sure you're gonna brew with him and maybe like I'm brewing a defender mill deck, but it's like I don't plan on like winning any fucking yeah, tournament. You're not, I plan on pissing you guys off of the deck. Yeah, it's a good like fucking around like, like you know casual. table like table magic yeah. is good, but if you're going like tier one kind of magic, it's not it's not there. Yeah, it does have the. I don't added, think it was. Added. I don't think it was meant. I don't think it was developed to be a tier one like kind of game one game changer. So, yeah, I mean, I love. I was actually hoping for a non-mill god. Like I love, I love to mill. I'm a Demir player for life. What were you looking for? You think? Like what? What would Demir be besides? I mean, okay, well, Demir like uh, Go on, tr- discard cards. Yeah, stuff? Demir discards and draws cards. Mm-hmm. Um, play off the graveyard or something. Yeah, play off the graveyard or something like that. Yeah. So like, I was expecting, like, I was almost thinking like, uh, like the old uh, Demir uh, mage or the. Uh, the fucking guild mage. The guild mage. Is that mages? the one? Yeah. Yeah, where you pay something, target player draws a card, pay something, target player discards a card, or something like that. I was kind of hoping for that. But. Well, well I was going to say the I'm added benefit the to the uh, Demir God. Um, it, it's a kind of minor upside. It allows you to, um, since you're playing high toughness creatures, you kind of want to go long game. Um, it allows you to block. And then right. tap it to mill. Right. And exactly. still allow it to block. So you're, you're not giving up any advantage by, oh, do I mill or do I have to block this turn? It's yeah. like, well, I can still protect my life total. Yeah. And still advance my game plan by milling you out. Yeah, because if, I mean, I, my mill deck right now is complete control. Like I run little creatures and a lot of control just so I can get to the late game, yeah. just so I can get to my five drops. And, uh, I mean, with this, you're going to be playing, Defensive creatures drop two, three, four, five, all the way up to the god. Yeah. So you're going to be protecting yourself as well as milling. So I mean, I mean, I'm 
I'm not as excited for him, but I, I definitely gonna brew with him. I'm not just gonna say he sucks and, and, and go away. Side. You know. Um, but okay, so so Mogus. What do you guys think of Mogus? Uh, I don't know. I, I still I haven't really looked at all the um, okay the so cards in this deck. I mean, but so Mogus uh, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, uh, he deals one damage to that player unless he or she sacrifices a creature. That's definitely fucking Rakdos for sure. Uh, yeah, to the Rakdos, core. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. I still don't feel Rakdos is anywhere in near any, any kind of playability yet. I mean, there might there might be with some of the like. You Red's know. looking kind of good in Born of the Gods. Like, Red, yeah, Red's like good. definitely good position compared but. to like M14 and Theros. Like Red's finally. I mean, I'm not that big of a Red player, but it's finally like looking like one of the little bit of a better color. Yeah. yeah, black's up there with like you know thought season stuff, but for like a limited like setting here, I don't know. I don't know about red black. I think you'd have limited. to do some serious brewing to get him into standard. Yeah. yeah. Well, the one thing I just like he provides the inevitability. You have to answer it, or else you're just gonna die regardless. And yeah. limited, you um, probably won't have all those creatures to sack. You probably just yes. have to take the two, which is fine. At least it affects the board. You know, it's a card that's gonna it's gonna affect the board every time, which yeah. is nice. It's gonna yeah almost immediately affect the board. Yeah, yeah. I think Purpose is better though. Well, still, Perfor- uh, you, you know, talk, going back uh, to Ther- or uh, yeah, Theros. I think it's a toss up because with Perforos, you need creatures to put on the board, right? But a red has um, a lot. It still it has, has a lot like of cheap uh, creatures, yeah. tasty stuff, the young um, pyromancer way, and stuff. This one kind of works on its own, and it still provides that benefit, right? Um, but one thing I do like about this god is it keeps planeswalkers in check as well. Oh yeah, cause because you can, you redirect, can redirect it, right? the damage to that. Yep. So say they play like a Cura. And they plus it. Well, I mean, you're going to take it down. You're going to win that race. You're, you're going to take it down to one. They're never going to be able to keep it. Mm-hmm. So it keeps a lot of those things in check for constructed. Even in, you know, uh, limited, it's good, especially when you're facing down like an Elspeth. Yeah, they're getting the tokens, but they're never going to be able to alt it. Mm-hmm. No, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. it's it's, a, it's bomby. It's definitely bomby for limited. I, I mean, if I pulled it, I'd, I'd play it. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely me too. But I don't, I don't know if, if it's anywhere going towards standards. Like, I'd yeah. pass that shit in a I, don't, second, I don't think anyone's going to be... Working too much with that. Yeah. And then, I mean, the best one, the obvious best <laughs> one, is Xenagos. Xenagos! Was that red green? Red green? Uh, it's red and something else. Some, uh, some other color. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Xenagos, I am, like, so pumped about. So, at the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gains haste. So you can play a creature and have it attack that turn. And it gets plus X, plus X until end of turn where X is the creature's power. Yeah, what a little trick that thing is. Dude. No, you I never know. know. You're never ready for anything. That thing affects the board drastically as soon as it comes into play. Yeah. Let's just say I don't want to be facing that card and then have them untap and play the green promo guy. And then I have to decide, do I attribute it? Make it a 12-12, and then they can make it a 24-24 with haste. Which one's the green promo guy? The, the Hydra? Yes. The six, oh, six the one that makes him fight? Yes. Yeah. The, the fight mm-hmm. one. Which you nobody wants that anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so goes is, that yeah. into one of those, and it's just pretty much game over. Like, I'm going to concede. Like, unless I have a removal spell that says destroy target creature, I'm not coming back from that. I can chump, but I'm never going to be able to defeat that those two cards. Yeah, Xenagos is definitely... Almost automatic win the game if you have any other creatures. Yeah, if you have any other kind of bombing creatures. In limited, 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 for sure. Limited. For sure, I feel it's like, a, like an auto concede almost. Yeah, I, in standard, I think it's good position. It's going to be like a two of in in the red green decks probably. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll definitely be. I mean, Wizard wants my money. Apparently, make sure you get they some trample card. going with that too. Yeah, you know, to make it really worth it, get some trample. We're definitely getting some yeah, Gore Clan yeah. rampagers out with like this guy for sure. Gore Clan, Bo Nylea. Yeah, the, or, uh, no, the uh, Nylea. Nylea. Yeah, Nylea herself. Yeah. yeah, then it'll all work out. Then you can just we can just stomp over anything, dude. Oh yeah, sounds horrible. It sounds say, horrible. <laughs> There's a deck called Super Friends. It utilizes all the different types of good planeswalkers. I want to make a Super Friends deck, but it utilizes all the gods. So we got a podcast I exclusive. Do, like all these gods. <laughs> we got a podcast exclusive. We're gonna go ahead and ban uh, Zenigos God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's immediately yeah, banned. Sorry, yeah, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I mean, what what other what other cards do you guys really stand out to you in the in the board yeah. of gods? What's the uh, the the two red? The two red uh, the mm-hmm. fire dancer. Fire dancer, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's another yeah. one that's a big standout for me. So this is a uh, fire dancer. It's a, it's actually a, a red one red one colorless. It's a one one. 
it pretty much it says that whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control deals damage to an opponent, uh, Seder, Fire Dancer deals that much damage to target creature that player controls. I think this is cool for like uh, any kind of fucking you know burn deck or anything like yeah. that. Oh, I actually good, saw it's like a, a gutter snipe and then yeah, you know it I, just to play off those. Yeah, exactly. Those cards. Um, that uh, Star City uh, Open today is what we're doing the podcast right now. It's going on. Um, Brad Nelson. I, I'm kind of nervous. So I kind of remember these names, but. Um, He's a top pro player, and he's actually playing a Boros deck with this guy in it. It's a Boros Burn. Oh, much. Boros Burn is so good. So he uses like all the Burn, Chandra Phoenix, you know, uh, Fire Drink Crusader. Is it Charm also? Things like that. Oh, yeah, of course, the Charm. It's charm. Um, charm. Does he crazy. play Spark Trooper at all? Do you know? I didn't quite. I didn't see in the deck when he played. I didn't get that. Spark Trooper. It's the um, the six it? one. It's a six one after. like with first strike, life link, trample, and then you have to exile at the end of your turn. Yeah, it, can, it comes uh, with it, haste. Oh, it's haste, just haste too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty gnarly. So yeah. um, one time use, you just hit a hit for yeah. six and gain six, and yeah. it nice. goes away. It's really good. I, I uh, from what he was playing, he was playing against a mono black deck, and he won. Nice. So it's yeah, that's of, something to say, mono right? Black is Kill that the, goddamn the mono black. Tier deck right now in standard, and able to take that down. Even though as a pro player against somebody that wasn't really technically the high pro player, but it's it's a good deck. Mono black's a good deck, and to be able to beat it says a lot. Mm-hmm. So I mean, this is good, but for like a true burn deck, like I don't think you really care about uh, their creatures all that much. Well, you know? it's a it's a plus to be able to clear. It's clear a plus, some, but some I think this creatures. is more of a, would be like a mid rangey half burn half creature, like a hybrid kind of. Yeah, yeah, not deck. like a true burn. Just doesn't well, give a shit. You about can your stay creatures. alive though too if you can if you can protect yourself by killing its creatures. It's kind of like a little two mana enchantment for the board. You know, you're not going to attack. You're not going to. Yeah, it's, it. it's pretty. You can get off the board real quick though. It kind of turns all your yeah, burn spells one, so. into like pseudo two for ones. Yeah. You're not really getting a true two for one because you have to have the guy out on the board as well. So you're mm-hmm. still taking up two cards. Mm-hmm. But all your burn spells become two for ones. So if you have a lightning strike and they have a three three, you burn them to the face and then you kill their three three. Right. And then right. you can attack it. I still, I still think it's yeah. definitely good, but uh, yeah, meh. So there's the there's the archetype cycle. Which oh, yeah, that's kinda cool. I think most of them are crap. It's a, uh, it's a neat concept, but I don't yeah. think it's anything fun. It's it's I think it's I don't know for limited mostly. Like you guys don't like the boar. You guys are not. Oh yeah, we got to talk about the boar. You're not talking about eight God, mana for a boar. Eight the eight mana, mana boar. That but it would it would win the game if you're playing limited. If for some reason you brought the yeah, thing out, then the game would be over. But. Who the fuck is getting And constructed, let's just say, have fun trying to cast that. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'd be dead by then. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, the the green archetype. Uh, creatures you control have hexproof. Uh, opponent's oh. creatures lose, can't gain hexproof. It's fucking eight, though. Eight for a six, it's, five? It's one of those win more cards. When you cast this card, you're, already winning. you're winning. You're winning. It's not like I'm behind, I'm at two life, they have like five creatures on the board. I'm going to play this guy, and I'm going to win the, the game. Right. It's not going to happen. You're going to solidify the win. You're going to yeah. ensure that extra 10% that like, I'm winning. But you can't, like, you can't flip a game with it. No, you, mm. you can't turn the game around with yeah, this card. You can't come it, back. It doesn't do it. anything when you're behind. I think, uh, well, let's, let's say that one for last. Okay, so the white one is, uh, it's one white white for 2-2, two, two, which is... Which is, uh, it's okay, you know. I think that's the best one, I'll just for, say right for van- It doesn't pass the vanilla test. Yeah, yeah, to, to steal another podcast thing, the vanilla test. Since it's double white. A 2-2 two, two for 3, so it's it's kind of, eh, whatever. But uh, creatures you control have first strike, other creatures lose first strike the opponent has. Can't gain it. So... Yeah, I mean, I think it's the best card. Simple as that. Low so casting really? cost. I think that first strike is going to be able to, you know, you're able to. You, they're not going to be able to attack, and you're always going to be able to. I mean, this is great. If you had vigilance too, yeah. you, you can just like, attack every turn, and they can't. That's like a white weenie shell or something. What's that? Is it like good in a white weenie shell? Something that's just low cost. I think it's, white? it's good for all the yeah. the commons. If you had a bunch of commons, are you talking about for limited or for limited? Okay. okay. If you had a bunch of commons and they're all just like two fours and bullshit like that, it, everything is just going to be able to hold its own. While not just being a, a little basic vanilla nothing, it's going to turn everything into something special. I, yeah, I think that's great. Double block really kill. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. I think the heroic decks are going to love this card. Oh yeah. Give all your heroic guys first strike. I think so. Yeah, it's perfect. I think in limited, it's going to be good. In in standard, there. Okay, me and a quick were talking about this the other day. All the really super good, like, mid-range white cards are one white-white. If you look at them, 
there's so many good one white white right. cards that it's like, how is this guy ever going to fit just in? Three drops, just just three drops in general. Yeah. You but know, some I also know another podcast. They said that there's a lack of three drops in white. In no, not in white, but just in general of uh, the meta game right now. So there's a lack of three drops. So huh. Everything's more, going like more right. rapey, big. Yeah, if, if, if you're, you're doing like super like low costed aggro, like fucking your your highest commercial mana cost is like three or you know two or whatever for these. These fast decks, though, or you get like the fucking mid range and right. you know the late game. Yeah, decks. I think a three is the perfect mana cost. Though. I think there's good three drops out there. I just don't think people are playing good, the good three drops because it's either hyper aggro or like grindy or maybe mid range. So like three drop isn't getting love right now because just the style of the meta game. Well, I think it's Thotsy. Thotsy has a lot of problems with uh, with a lot of these these lower so just, lower end because so just, just you just fuck up their curve. You're right off the bat. I mean, you're getting thoughtsies. You're already fucking or you thought they their bomb. Yeah, so, or, I mean, you know, it's mm-hmm. th- thoughtsies is a very uh, meta warping card that I felt like kind of needed to be around because it's kind of a bomb set. So you want to make sure you can get those out of their hands. Definitely right. think it's in the but right in it, the right it format. Changed it so much that like everybody's playing so protective that you can't really go that deep just because the cards around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's nice to get a god out of the hand also because that's hard to deal with. It's all kinds of yeah. stuff, you know. Besides just the standard bombs. Oh, unlimited. It's a, like a super bomb. Yeah. You know. But uh, so the blue one is uh, four blue blue uh, for a three two. Six mana for a 3-2. Creatures you control have flying. Creatures your opponents, you know, lose flying, can't gain flying. So, shitty, shitty body. Shitty body for six mana. But, it gives all your creatures fucking evasion. Yeah. It's, it's almost like a fucking alpha strike when you, yeah. when you put it down, you could possibly, if you have enough creatures, just fly over them. This feels like win more, right. though, too. It's, even a limited. It's, it's, a, it's a little win more. Yeah. Yeah, but I still feel like it's a limited bomb. I feel Constructed will never fucking see the light of day. I'm oh, actually going to put one of these in my control decks. Yeah. I'm going to pair it with Elspeth, no, and all my tokens, they're just going to go no, right over. you're not. <laughs> right over. You're not. It is, no. It's going to happen. And then I'm going to alt Elspeth, and, and then I'm, I'm going to have Spear Helion. You're going to play it, and we're going to be like, and it's going to die right away, and you're like, fucking six mana. <laughs> yeah, I just tapped out for this. I could have played an Elspeth. Yeah. <laughs> I already have an Elspeth. That's on the board. You have two. Yeah, that one's going to die anyway. Isn't that how it works? We always kill the first one, but when you bring out the second one, we're like, well, we already used our own one. I don't have anything else for that. Fuck. <laughs> All right, that's that's uh, that's pretty far though. You're reaching down the rabbit hole for that one. <laughs> I don't know. You can't you can't overlook something as evasion. Even Evasion's though, really good. Even though the format, body but... is kind of crappy, they're gonna have to have a removal spell because I'm not gonna attack with it. Yeah. Right? Well, just, I mean, I'm not gonna. Attack. Well, what about just but like the two like man of Vasa man. unblockable stuff, or it's just something like that? It's. You don't need to, well, I guess you need, for that one, you have to get through all your creatures, not just one. I, but most of the you know. I have to spend two mana per creature, and then I have to get them through. This one, I spent a one-time investment of six, and then all I have to do is protect it, and Man. I have inevitability. I guess if you have some counters or something like that. But. So, the next one, I think, is probably the worst one of all. Unfortunately, the black one. I have three of them. If anyone wants to trade me for some good cards. <laughs> the black <laughs> one is four black black for a two-three. Creatures you control have death touch. Creatures your opponents control lose and can't get death touch. <sighs> death touch. I mean, okay. Nothing beats best. Death touch. Best case scenario, they don't have any flyers, and you can stop them from attacking, and they yeah. don't have trample. You so can, you can effectively trade your crappy tutu bear. You can for, trade up for their huge monster or whatever. Yeah, you can definitely trade up, but I just it's. It feels like the worst one to me. It, it's weird, I, lo- I love Death Touch. I love Black. Worst yeah. one. It's weird, though. I, I understand it's taking away a keyword, but when you print uh, an artifact that uh, grants Death Touch, I'd much rather put that card in my deck, limited deck, rather than this card. Are you talking about the, uh, the Gorgon's, the Gorgon's head? head? Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather... Because it's... I mean, I can just keep swapping it out. Um, yeah, I'm, and it's I'm harder, to, a harder to get bit. rid of. It's harder to get rid of. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, artifact hate in this set, yeah. especially since it's... Very enchantment based. Yeah. Um, I just much rather have that. It's more flexible. It's you know it's recurring. Um, you know I don't have to have double black as well. So like even if I'm trying to splash black and put Ooh. this card in, which I'd never do, but yeah, I, I I don't like it. It's I think it's the worst one. Um, I think you're the worst one. Yeah. So the red one is one red red for three two uh, creatures. You get have trample. Other creatures lose trample. 
Um, Who doesn't like trample? I think it's. It, I personally think it's the best one. Yeah. Really? Trample? Yeah. You think it's the best one? I think it's the best one. I think um, it's good. I still think the what? whites. My vote is the white. But, Fly, uh, flying, flying is really hard to beat. As in terms of like utility, I think but, flying and first strike. But the cost, I think, is just. Uh, so vanilla wise, it's the best one. Vanilla wise, so it's a it's a three two for three. So at its lowest point, it's probably the second best one. It's three two for three that gives everything trample. Yeah. Uh, you'll probably be pairing it with green because oh, yeah. you want big fatties to run shit over. Yeah. So if you do pair it with green, I think it's going to be... This is limited you're talking about. Yeah, we're talking limited. About. Okay. Because yeah. I don't think this is going to be playable. No. Right. A lot of these cards If, if you want trampled, there's other ways to get it. Yeah. And, I mean... Yeah, I mean... Uh, I might try to have a night. We, we have yeah. to... Indestructible. Why not? Yeah, yeah exactly. You know? And then you can pump stuff. These are pump my initial fun. thoughts for standard on these cards. You'd, you'd have to let me sit down and maybe brew with them for a little bit to actually... And plus, I'm not... A fucking pro. Well, none of us are pro yeah, players, so we don't, yourself. <laughs> we don't necessarily no, have the keen is, eye for this shit, but I think that one's the best. <laughs> um, I mean, was there any other cards that really stuck out to you? Like, There's some, like, uh, I think, isn't there mixed color cards in here? That... You have to check that out. I haven't, I haven't really looked through every there's, single there, one of them. Okay, there's one card I that there's I want to like, touch on. That is the uh, the Simic one, the Cure's Follower. It's oh, a two yes. mana, two two, untapped target permanent. I'm gonna break that. Another card. target permanent. That's the thing is I don't know what it's gonna do yet. But when I see a, if I ever see online a playset in someone's deck, I'm like, oh, what the fuck is he thinking? What's gonna? What is he planning yeah. to do? What is he? Gonna uh, there's definitely gonna be me? some shenanigans. Right, right. right. I'm, it's just I'm like that. Bring it to the table. What I'm is that? The, that the right voyaging now. satire, or whatever it is, the or voyaging satire. satire. But that uh, untaps lands. This right. One this is better. A target permanent. Um, you know, for, and it's one more limited. Power. It's it's great. Um, I yeah, think limited, especially since there's inspired in the set. Exactly. Oh, inspired. Yeah. A lot of the inspired shit is like they're like one ones or two ones. Yeah. You can't attack with them. Yeah. So yeah. how the fuck are you gonna get untap if you can't get it to tap? Yeah. yeah and exactly. so you have something like that, and then oh god, it's oh. awesome. Or this, and then the spring leaf drum. Yeah. Because you get to play the same spring thing. Spring leaf drum to I got tap no play it, this, turn. this yeah. to untap it. Um, but tap when, all your inspired guys. Get yeah. The benefit. Without well, you you, using gotta, you only do one per turn though, because you have to tap the. No, I'm saying if you have spring leaf drum, you tap. The spring right. leaf drum and the creature, yes. and then you use the follower to untap the spring leaf drum, right, 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 and then right. tap another creature. So like, right, right. so that way you get your inspired guys to tap without actually losing them because most of them, or a lot of them, are fragile. Um, right. If you start doing that, then you get to start paying the cost of the uh, inspired instead of start bringing out shit out of your hand. You can kind of just if you get the, a little bit of setup on the board, you can just start paying. You know, free for guys can be coming out. Yeah. If you're ahead, you gain card advantage because you don't have to play cards. You don't have to play cards. No. Which is no. sick. Um, another thing is I want to do the illusionist bracers combo with this guy, <laughs> where it's an artifact, you equip it, and uh, whenever an activated ability is triggered, you get to copy it. So not only do I untap one permanent, I can untap another permanent as well. So I untap one thing, and I untap that, and I trigger it again. Why don't you just play, uh, fucking, the blue, uh, Cypher. Cypher? Yeah. It's because you actually, to get the Cypher, you, you bring it out, you Cypher, you get the effect. Mm-hmm. Then you Cypher it on the card. Then you actually have to attack in. You have to get damage, get damage in to yeah. get the Cypher I was thinking, again. uh, there's another blue one that lets you... Tap and untap two. As many times as you want? No, 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 but it's two. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. You want unlimited power. I, I'm trying to combo off here. I'm trying to kill you in one turn. All I have to do is get it set up. That That's the objective here. Justin, you talk about these decks all the time. I do. Yeah. And I want to see the combo. Yeah. You're still going to You're still going to win. The lands. You're still going to win. I need lands. The to lands can't the attack. <laughs> hey, if they could kill them. They I could. Know. Uh, I think <laughs> the other good card in this this whole set is the uh, the tribute. I think the tribute ability is pretty cool. I don't know like how they're going to play out in standard, but the the red green, the fanatic of Xenagos, it's uh, red green one color, so it's three mana. It's a three three. But it has the tribute ability. So tribute says that uh, uh, essentially, when the creature enters the battlefield, if tribute is not paid, it gets uh, a certain ability or a certain plus side. So for the the fanatic of Xenagos, it's uh, tribute is one. So whenever fanatic of Xenagos enters the battlefield, if tribute wasn't paid, it gets a plus one plus one and gains haste until end of, end of turn. And this is a three three, starting out. So if you don't, if you pay the tribute. Right, it's gonna get plus one plus one, so it's gonna be a four four a four four for three. And if you don't pay the tribute, 
is going to be a 4-4. Four, four. With haste. With haste. And for, then turn into a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Yeah. For, for, and it's, it's just, this, this seems like a, a great, uh, freaking yeah. gruel aggro card. I this think is, it's the, like with the tribute cards, it's like there's, there's a floor and a ceiling, meaning yeah. like worst case scenario, best case scenario. This is the narrowest of them all. Yeah, this, where this, it's yeah. like either way, you're like fucking sweet. So this Here's, puts you in a hard spot. That, that's what you're looking for with these is the gap. Yeah, this right. one has you a tiny two, gap. You pretty much have two cards on one Your card. Your mom has a tiny gap. The, oh, the more similar the choices are, the hey, better the gap, it is. Mind the gap. Yeah. So oh. the thing is with Tribute, I feel that it's always going to be in favor of your opponent because he has a choice. I know that that it's going to be it's going to be you know a hard hit either way, whatever he chooses. But he's never going to choose the one that's going to hurt that hurt the most. He's always going to choose the one that hurts the least. So I don't like giving him the advantage to do that. I mean, if you have something in your hand that's like, haha, I tricked you and now I put something down, but that's probably going to be rare. It's more going to be like whatever's going to be advantageous to him. He knows it. He'll choose it, and that's the end of it. I think. Well, on the flip side of that though, too, is you also get information from your opponent. Can they deal? Right, can right, they right. deal with this creature? Or that's fair. Can, can if they, he, can leaves, they deal yeah. with if he leaves it bigger, then it's like, well, if they, yeah, deal with, if they say, yeah. okay, go have the bigger creature, it's like, okay, they got some removal or right, some way fair. to deal with that's it. Fair. So there is that that other side to it, but I think it's more of the the two halves. The closer they are, the harder and the better it is. Yeah, the, the judgment call is going to be. Is, they would put them more difficult. Like I mean, for this one, it's like, okay, yeah, I'll, I won't pay the tribute, and I'll just go ahead and take four right now because he's going to have haste. And, yeah. But then he's just going to be a three three, and I can yeah. deal well, with him with what a if shot. That four four you know, with like, haste, you know, didn't a lightning strike wasn't going to do anything. Then it's like you kind of. Yeah, I mean, if you yeah, he got a free one-one counter taken off of it. You know? If you're in the position on like turn three where you can you can reliably say, okay, yeah, I can I can get rid of this four four, right, right, no problem. That's like yeah, pay the pay the tribute. I don't then. think there's a lot in the format, but I mean, that's that's, that's really that that's really aggressive. Yeah, it's a good, no, that's three. a really good card. I say for the tribute thing, that card is is awesome. It's oh, an yeah. awesome three drop. Definitely limited. It's gonna it's it's awesome. And constructed. And constructed. Playable. I think it's definitely playable. And also just to go back one sec to the to the tap on tap guy, the follower. I think oh. there's going to be some sweet brews with him. Oh, like yes. there's sweet somebody's brews. sweet brews, bro. There. Someone's out there's going to break it. <laughs> so, oh, I, I got, got some sweet I'm gonna brews. Dude, I'm a brewmaster. <laughs> I've been brewing for years. What I'm really cool, like excited about this uh, this set is all the fucking Minotaurs. Because like Minotaur, I think tribal it could possibly. Aren't you just talking shit about Minotaurs? I was talking shit about some Minotaurs <laughs> a little while ago. God damn. But no, I think, I think Minotaur Tribal could be a thing, like, in standard yeah. coming up. Like, it won't, not gonna be like tier one, but I mean, I think it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be tier zero. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be, it'll be so good. It's gonna go negative tiers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then your opponents have all the tiers. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna give them an advantage. It's gonna be so good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> see, see, I, I, I agree with Reich here that I, I like, okay, I like the idea of a tribal, uh, theme. In the set because we don't really have that right now. And if you, uh, I know Corey or fucking Knife City was talking about earlier in the podcast that uh, how we're new, we don't know all these older older cards and how other podcasts you know uh, relate them because they're similar effects. But um, you know, you look in older formats, they have a lot of tribal themes. Yeah, to like them. goblins. Goblins. Like goblins. Elves. That sounds so fun to play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like elves. Sounds, I want to play elves. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that yeah. type of stuff. I, I don't like where the Minotaurs at right now, just because I don't think they have enough support to really make it like into uh, something that's really good. Because right now, it's about a lot of counters, about a lot of attacking. Do you think well, it's good with all like the red burn stuff? You know, like, all that stuff that's coming I out? Think like, it, I think a little bit of a mix. in the Minotaur deck, it fits because I feel like it's a very aggressive... It's kind of an aggro-y type yeah. deck. Like, you want to get all... You want to unload your hand and turn everything sideways and put the pressure on. Yeah, so I think unfortunately, for, Mana Curve is shit with Minotaurs. There's oh, only yeah. one and two. Yeah. Like, yeah, Rakdos, Cracklers and all that stuff, but it doesn't, like... It doesn't have the synergy. It just yeah. is a good card. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, like it, there, there's not the synergy there yet. Because if you look back to the older, like, the... You know, look back to fairies, goblins, elves, and the older sets. They have, like, a lot of other cool supportive cards, like a lot of uh, tribal cards that aren't creatures. But they're spells, they're enchantments that also mm -hmm. benefit because it is a tribal card as well. Mm -hmm. So, Do you think they're, like, scared to, like, make something tribal and then, like... Give it enough support to where it's like just yes. crazy because I think they probably yeah because everyone was all like you know hyped up about slivers and I think they had to like nerf no. them well, a the old bit, the slivers know? of the old days right was like fucking awesome I hear but I mean the well, new that, slivers that's because the it was just too good I think whenever you played a sliver 
every other sliver got the effect. Yeah, it was not just... only yours, but your opponent's as well. So they kind of yeah. they're like, yeah, go ahead and play that. That would be cool. It's I'll kinda, get it too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now they don't only affects your creatures and stuff like that. But like you were saying, I think they are afraid to make a tribal thing too. Too powerful. powerful. Yeah. So you look back to elves. Elves is still a huge deck, even a legacy now. And they had to ban cards that went in the elves decks because it just it blew everything else out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. Not to sidetrack, yeah, but I think that's why I like yeah, any of the. I mean, I'm standard and limited. That's my main things. But I'm starting to get into commander. I think we're all starting to get into commander. But I'm like super excited about commander because that's the whole fucking point is to build a, a tribal deck, a theme. That's what I fucking like. Yeah, I want yeah. a whole bunch of fucking zombies that come back from the dead. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, I don't think that there's going to be much of a tribal thing. Well, uh, I, mean, I was glad to see more Minotaurs. We'll see what like the next Minotaurs set brings. Like, but I wanted to see dragons. I was hoping dragons would, dragons be, nice, would but... be like you know they'd have some strong. Once again, has the same problem. There's not enough uh, rampy, like, like the, the the low mana cost creatures. There's not enough of that. Yeah. Like they have the egg. The egg is sick, but it's not like it's not great. It's just fun. But it, it, and or the, the, the zero one one drop. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is the same thing. Like if you if if it's a slower game, then you can just can tap all your mana and just hit him until it's gone, and then you start playing your hand. Yeah. But I would like keep. I would hold my hand and just throw down lands and whatever little enchantment stuff, and just use that creature until it's fucking gone. Just like well, the the fire drinker or something yeah. like that, you know. But that's all you got. And then yeah. you have to wait till fucking four mana to drop yeah. anything. Well, good. it's like if you want to play gap. dragons, Sucks. you instantly have to pair it with green because green has all the ramp, and all the dragons are going to be like five, six, seven, eight drops. Yeah, and they're so, fucking fatties. Like you were saying, you don't have like the supportive like early game to get you there, so you have to pair it with green. Mm-hmm. So you have to go red green, and I don't feel like that's I don't know, any kind of fun. Like, I, I don't want to be forced into <laughs> well, careful, careful. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying Red Green's not fun, but I don't want to have to be... I think if I want to play Dragons... I think those fighting words yeah. right now. <laughs> oh, you know, we can take this on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it plays out, you know. We don't have but. an hour. <laughs> yeah. True, true. Oh, man. So, the obviously, I'm excited about some black cards. Um... So Pain Seer, everyone's mm. com- everyone's comparing the, the him. Hype, the type yeah, of everyone's comparing him to some fucking old card. Bob, Dark yeah, Confidant. Dark Confidant. Oh, yeah, I don't Dark give a Confidant. shit about the old cards. So I'm just looking at this card in a vacuum. I don't care about comparing him. So he's not later. Later, those those time those conversations. He's will come. he's not all that great, but I think I found a home for him because I'm brewing a humans deck with Xanthrid Necromancer and just a, a fucking. Curving out, at, topping out the curve at three, right, right. and just playing all humans and fucking this guy because if it's if I'm going to be playing like an aggro, flood the board with my fucking humans, I'm going to need some you're sort of reliable way to, to get cards. To get cards. Yeah, you're gonna your hand's going to be empty really yeah. quick, and then you're going to be like, I need might to flood the board way more. Like yeah. it's dying, and I have I just have to draw one and be like, uh, fuck, <laughs> yeah, fucking to land. Point. Yeah, ramp has the same problem. It's like you get all your shit on the on the board, and you just, you don't have any more card yeah, hands. I you got to get. I plan on playing like, you know, God's Willing, Buna Erebos, and also playing, uh, uh, the, the 3 2 Death Touch that came out in Theros. Agent of Fates. Agent right. of Fates, cause, oh, what my about God. Read the Bones. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you don't care about losing life, you know. Well, the not? thing is, like, I, I, do, okay, so Pain's here, if he untaps and I get a card, great. If not, hopefully I'll have Xanthrid Necromancer out, and if he dies, I still get a zombie out of it. So it's like, either way, I don't care if I actually get the inspired effect. It will be nice, that's the whole reason I'm putting him in here. But if he dies, whatever, because Xanthrid Necromancer, he's going to bring back my shit. So I don't, right, I don't right. really care if my shit dies, you know? But that's, I mean, that's that's the only plausible deck he could go in. Other than that, I'm not all that excited about him. Like, whatever. Yeah. Why is he five I, bucks? Get that shit out of here. Yeah. Man, now that you brought up Breathe the Bones, like, for me personally, like, if it was, like, I was going to decide if I wanted a, a 2-2 body that could possibly draw me a card, or I can take two life and I draw two cards regardless. And scry. Yeah, and you, scry. you scry those two cards, and then you yeah. draw. I, I, I think for me personally, I'd much rather have the two cards and get those two cards right now. Right, right. Um, you know, it definitely makes sense in your humans deck because yeah, it is a human. You yeah. do get at least a zombie out of it if you have exactly nothing mentioned, but. Would you play a whip or know. something in that? No, it would okay. top out at three. Okay. It would like, top out with, like, uh, Banisher Priest and, uh,. What about uh, the double strike guy? Agent of Fates. Uh, uh, like I Table said, hero. there's so many good three drops in one white white, and uh, there's some good ones in black to where it's just hard. So I'm gonna have to like brew with it. Yeah. But the double strike guy I was thinking of. It's fucking, it's it's a bomb, dude. It's for the white and all that stuff. And it I was also thinking of uh, 
Fuck what's the one from M14? Uh, didn't you trade me? You gave me the one? Hmm. The card? That doesn't matter. The one with the hammer. Oh, the Fiend, Fiend Slayer Paladin. Fiend Slayer Paladin. Yeah, Paladin. that one's... I don't know. I got. I gotta have to fuck around. I, with him. I like Fiend Slayer. Yeah. The guy with the uh, the lightsaber. Yeah. yeah. And so the other, the other black card I'm really excited about is Guild. Yeah. There's nothing would. I love more than black unconditional removal. And so it's the best kind of removal. It's the too. best kind of removal because I don't give a fuck about your indestructibility. I don't give a fuck about your million a million health. Like it is. I don't fucking care about your voice exci- of resurgence. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I am not. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. They're fucking sweet. Uh, <laughs> that is, that's the only reliable way to get rid of that and card. And it's, not, it's not conditional. All the exile ones are like a exile attacking creature, exile tapped creature, or exile, it's white. exile white. It all has a condition. This one is like, I don't Target care what you are, it's going creature. away. And you get mana back Yeah, for and it. put a colorless yeah, artifact cool. token named good. gold onto the battlefield, sacrifice. So it is like, it's, you know, if you think about it, it's kind of like a three mana card because you get to, you know, you spend it yeah. later on. You know, it's not yeah, all that's that's to go. Yeah. And also, you know, you could you have possible lines of play where people might try to destroy your artifact that you got from it because they don't want you to have that mana. Like they yeah. could be in a point where you know you could represent something where they're not able to attack, so they're going to try to yeah. kill it so that you can go in and get those. I think if they were to try and destroy the artifact, then it, it, I would be very I would be case, I would be happy if they I, went I, after. That, it. That's what I'm saying. Like that, yes, I, I would be happy for them to do that. Like waste a putrefy on totally, it or something. Totally, that'd be sick. Like hell yeah. Um, other than that, like I'm. I'm I think we're all the ignoring the elephant in the room at this point. Well, what's and that? that elephant is chromatic core. <laughs> <laughs> Who bought a playset? <laughs> right here. <laughs> Fucking. And okay. I, honestly, Let, I'm excited up. as ever about that card. I love it. Okay. It's silly, and everyone's going to be hate me, but I don't give a fuck. I love it. My favorite. Okay, Everything. so it's one of every color, or what they call Stupid. Uber. Apparently, they Uber. call it Uber. Is there a name for Uber. it? Uber? Uber? Uber, because it's Uber? white, blue. Oh. Uh, first, Uber. Uh, whatever. God. That's too complicated. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's a 4-4 four, four for 5. Um, has flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, lifelink, and it has bestow for, uh, seven. Two, wor- two, wor- 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 two in Wooberg. So, like, okay, I understand, like, the card's awesome, and if you can actually play it, like, it's gonna dramatically affect the board. What fucking deck are you gonna put this in? Like, <laughs> explain the deck. The deck that plays go. everything. I, I just wanna know how many cards you have to devote just to cast to that card. It's every, all the cards. Oh. You, you build a deck with 59 lands and then this one card. <laughs> you know what I got so far? I got uh, lanterns and the uh, the two mana plant that gets any mana and um, the hexproof. The hexproof one, yeah. and that's where I'm at so far. <laughs> <laughs> what is the? Um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I love it. See, see, I would totally be on board with the card, um, and they couldn't obviously okay. put it in there because the type line is not big enough. But if it said legendary on it. Oh new, yeah, new, new yeah, 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 definitely. New oh, right, right, right. That, and Fair I'm gonna enough. play all the good Fair like spells. Now it. this is silly, but what if like for a sliver deck? So you play every color anyway. Yeah, 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 you could, but but that's the that's and it the has thing. everything a sliver already has all in one, and yeah. you get to just you have like your sliver, your, your combo, and like three abilities, and then you get to just bestow it yeah. onto one, your little guy and fucking do some major damage. And he okay. died. Anyways, it's I think it's real. Trust cool. me, I, I love little gimmicks like that. That's why I run Mazes End. That's why I'm gonna try I was to just, break I was your. Just, uh, end, yeah. I was, was just gonna say, would you consider putting yes. one of these in your Mazes End deck? Yes, you would. No. See all you need? What? I'm I, the the new version of one my Mazes End slot? deck. Yeah. I got doesn't those. run any creatures. Really? Yes, I'm going to be running, like, 20 fogs in the deck <laughs> in my main thing. Yeah. See, these will help you right here. These that, that one, Sylvan Keratids. Oh, like, yeah, so you can add one color of any mana. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know the names. The names sucks. My main thing is I forget one, it takes one card in your deck to play it, right? How many supportive cards do you need to take in your deck to be able to cast it? How long is it going to take to cast no, no, you're making the rest of your deck weaker just to do this card. In limited, Absolutely. Yes. In limited, yeah, I'm it's... I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, love it. but like, like I was saying, I love little, like, I love little, like, little things like this that, like, nobody else really does. I like it. That's why I did Maze's End. Now, what so about like End, if you were to get that, uh, that, that podium card, you know, that gets plus one to all legendaries, and because you're already playing all these different fucking colors, you play some rampy cards, and you play a bunch of crazy legendary cards... And Chromanticores and call it a fucking deck. Like it's just a. Well, Chromanticores is not legendary. Yeah. I know, I know. 
But that's the only card that's not legendary. Everything but else you play legendary. I, It'd be whatever colors you want. There's not a good. You like, can play the look at like obsidats and all kinds of weird. But shit I mean, like that. the low enough curve filler. Yeah. Would you just do like? Or you just, just mana? wait. You just take all the well, take all the. Yeah, that, that's the thing. You have to. Drum. You have to convert so many cards to actually cast those cards. You have to um, remember. I have play play like three lanterns, three or four I, lanterns. Yeah, yeah, that. I understand. But then again, you you have to actually draw the lanterns. They have to stick. You have to have all five colors at once, and then you have to have like legendaries that kind of like work together, kind of. And then you kind of have to like protect it because you're, you're you're going to turn six, seven, eight. Usually, cards or decks like that run some form of control in a way. Or like he- very heavy removal. It, I think it's just there's too much in one deck. In the I think it's all up. fair. I think all your points are valid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, <laughs> You're I'm, still I'm, I'm barely listening. <laughs> <laughs> barely listening because I know I'm wrong. But it feels right, you know. You gotta follow. You gotta How follow. Something's so wrong. Right. Feels so right. I'm, I'm following my dick. You yeah. know, the heart, the, or the brain saying this, the dick saying I gotta go chromanticore. If you want to do it, you gotta do so, it. I mean, you can't. I think it. it's gonna be a fun like kitchen table deck. Oh yeah, like, definitely. I definitely. I, think it's a cool I card. definitely want to see it. I want to. Um, see I just want the cards to that. Card. So I'm, if, if you're gonna be playing that deck, all I know is I'm gonna be playing uh, peak eruptions, four of them. Oh, just all day long. Lands. Lands. I'm gonna make sure you land destruction all day, every day. Kill your mountains. Kill all your mountains. Get that out of here. <laughs> oh, you need that red? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for one more card, and it's not even that great of a card, but I have this like utopia. Uh, idea of a fucking discard deck in my head, cause when, uh, like Innistrad was still standard legal before the rotation, um, I had a rat deck, and it was just based off a of discard. And the less cards you have in your hand, the more damage you're gonna be taken, blah blah blah. So, they spoiled the card for M15, it's a uh, one colorless, one black, and it's if an opponent discards, Creature card, do X. If an opponent discards land card, do Y. If a po- uh, spell card or uh, instant or sorcery, do Z. So I'm going to get something good when you discard something. So I want to make a discard deck, and I think Siren of the Silent Song is going to go good. It's one blue-black. It's a flyer, 2-1. Inspired, whenever this dude becomes un- untapped, each opponent discards a card, and then you mill a card. So, I mean, the milling isn't all that important, but... Um, I'm just kind of excited for yeah. it because so there's some I, great ideas. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can. I'm definitely gonna like brew a deck, but yeah. I mean, this is this is just like hopefully in the future. I'm excited. It's not gonna do anything. It'll, it'll be all right and limited. It's not gonna do anything in standard right now. Probably wouldn't even do anything in standard when I brew the deck when it actually comes out. Uh, but I think it's just gonna be fun and piss you guys off. But it's gonna be playing. fun. That's yeah, bad. it's That's gonna bad. be fun. Fun is where it's at. You can play like one of those the uh, the fog turbo fog decks. Uh, Nobody yeah. likes those. Yeah, this is you know. My hey, really, deck, really quick. Yeah, Twenty fog it. effects. Okay, we're not we're not gonna have this card. But can we just really quick just talk about. The what is it? The Brimaz or whatever. Oh, Brimaz, the King oh, of Oreos. Just God. because that's the best card in the deck. Okay. So I always want to say, in the set, I, I'm, the whole set. I'm yeah, not spending no thirty bucks on yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, so shit. If I pull it, I'm selling it. Are you? Yeah, yeah. You sell to me. Here, re- read it out. What, 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 what's what's so great about this guy, dude? Okay, let's, so let's I mean, see. this guy is probably the best card in the set. Have you not heard? I have not heard. <laughs> have you not heard the the Brimaz? That's the word. Okay, so <laughs> it's one white white for a three four. Already, yeah. white doesn't get aggressive stats. It's already like broken. Man. Three, four, yeah. three. Fuck yeah. Okay, it has vigilance. Who who wouldn't be happy if the text passes, ended there? Passes right there. Right, Thirty dollars. Right. Yeah. Take my money. Yeah, exactly. that would already be a fucking great card. Also, it has whenever oh. Bramaz attacks, put a one-one white cat soldier creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield. So when you're attacking, him. you're getting more upsides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh oh, you thought it ended there. You still want to pay thirty dollars? Oh, well, guess what? Toughness. Guess well, what it can do? It can well, guess block. what? Boom! Whenever he blocks, put a one-one white cat soldier creature fucking uh, million word token with vigilance onto the battlefield. Right. So you can get two that tokens creature. every rotation. Blocking, blocking, that blocking that creature. That Bri- 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 is yeah, it has yeah. to block the same creature. So it right, right, right. Become, you have uh, a four-five. A four-five split in two two bodies. Mm-hmm. So this Ugh. card is. It's like this is what. We want Chromanticore to be because this is just buttloads of crazy packed into a fucking three man. Yeah, how did they get all card. those words on that one? I know, right? Right. right. <sighs> I think they had to print them on the back. Uh, but this is just nuts. It has so it has so much fucking shit. 
You know what it reminds me of? It's it's like uh, fucking Vampire Nighthawk in white. Oh yeah. Because it's just giving you so much. It's not like so a, much value. It's for not so a bomb that's gonna like if you. It's not like a fucking eight drop that's gonna win you the game, but you're getting so much fucking value for three mana. Right. That it's, it's all so the decks I've seen play four of them, even though it's legendary. Like they don't give a yeah. fuck. But like, that shit is <laughs> gonna be on the board. You gotta play four Palukanos. Yeah, yeah, it's gotta, it's gotta be on the board. They don't care. You know, it but, has yeah. to, every time you play the play a game, you have to put that shit on the board. That is broken though. It's, it's that is good. Hey, so how long are we going with this shit? What? We're at a minute eight right now. An hour eight. Hour eight. I don't know, so we fucking didn't got we did two hours last time. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. No, that's cool. I'm yeah, just cool. curious. Still, like, you know, we have nothing left to talk yeah. about. Do we have a standard for the listeners of what to expect? Because, you know, every time I hear it, I kind of have a feeling about the, the certain podcasts are an hour and a half every time. Yeah. Within, within reason, you know, unless we have, like, a guest or this and that. You yeah. Know? And by guest, I mean a nobody that nobody else knows except for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That'll be the best like guest. Us. Yeah, best guest ever. Yeah, let's bring my girlfriend on. Yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> Tell me about magic. Oh, I fucking hate it. <laughs> play it too much. Spend too much money on it. Uh, I don't think that, I mean, like, I don't think there should be a standard. Like, I don't okay. want, I don't want to do Fair like enough. a, I don't want to do like a half an hour podcast. No, no. No, that's You fine. know, but, you know, anywhere between like an hour and three hours. Well, as long three as hours is a little much. Like, I don't want to hear myself talk for yeah. fucking three hours. I don't want to hear you talk for three hours. I'm like, I think you should here. go home right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it should be like hour to two hours. You know, standard. Uh, but I think as long as we at least provide the listeners with some form of information, a lot they of bad learn, yeah. they can improve their play <laughs> and they kind of know what's happening in the community. I feel like our listeners are going to just be better than us already. They're probably listening. No, they're already like. Listening like you guys, are you guys don't variety. know what you're yeah. talking no, about, see, and this, I say this I podcast is for people like us. And if you know people better than us want to listen, then they can you know continue Laugh. continue feeling better about themselves. They're like, yeah, man, dude. I am a good magic player. Yeah, yeah. These guys. They say, have you heard this new comedy podcast? <laughs> yeah, don't feel bad at laughing at us. They mention magic, but it's mostly just funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the way it should be. Um, okay, so we, you know. I'm done looking at the new cards. What about you guys? You're done talking about is there, uh, is there I want to go over like the meta. Like, what, what, what are we going to see? Like, is this going to change? Is there anything in here that you think is going to completely change the meta that's out there right now in standard? Like, like uh, standard meta, I feel uh, like it's pretty solidified. Like, so anything no matter that's what gonna you throw uh, in there. Anything that's going to affect like the current meta right now that it just came out. Like, so, like, so right now we have what? Like, mono blue is like fucking top dog. There's, we have mono black, top dog. We have then, control. Yeah, the blue, blue, white, X control. Yeah, those are like. So those are the main three. Those I would say are probably the top three, like, that's like the best of the best. Like, you can, this is, this is bread and butter kind that's of stuff. That's 75% now. of the metagame, and then the other 25% is just all the other decks. Yeah, like, I feel like right now. But I, yeah, I mean, I don't yeah, see, I don't see too many cards in this whole, this set right now coming out that's gonna maybe change that too much. I mean, you, no, you, know, I you know what I see? When I look at this set, I think it's gonna I see it. a lot of cards like Desecration Demon. They don't have a home right now, but once rotation hits, some of these cards are gonna fucking skyrocket. Yeah, I'm sure once Ravnica goes away and like you gate crash and a little bit. Is this <laughs> 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 stink? Yeah, oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. I didn't hear it. You snuck it out, dude. So, yeah. Sorry about that. Be glad you're on the other end. <laughs> yeah. Apologize. Apologize. And it kind of startled me. Fucking is there a dead rat in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, that that's when I look at the set. <laughs> most of the things you're, you're thinking of future, like this yeah, is I'm this thinking, is something that's going to be like there's top dogs right now that are out there, and then once got the top dogs go go away, there's going to be some of the cards yeah, that are going to they're going to rise to cards. the occasion. Yeah, they'd be like, hey, now now that these guys aren't in play, like, hey, I'm I'm the next kid on the block. <sighs> there's some good. I feel like Mono Blue got some good stuff. Like it might not Ooh. use it might not use this stuff. But like, there's they a lot have, of good more, mono blue more ammo out there. You have yeah. more options. So when options when limited. rotation does hit, like mono blue might still be a thing. I I think these mono color decks are going away once rotation goes out. Yeah, you're, probably you're losing all your enablers, all of them. Yeah, I every mean, single one. There's not e- there's not even good replacements for it in this set that that can even compete. Those older ones. I, I can't yeah. wait for them to go away. I don't like mono decks. Because <laughs> you're losing Night Bell, <laughs> you're losing Frostburn, uh, you're losing unless, like, unless it's mono red. Mono red should stay forever. <laughs> mono red's never going anywhere. <laughs> Everything <laughs> else go away. Underworld connection. <laughs> mono decks like, are easy to play. They're simply put, like you know, I don't know. They're they're just like a reliable thing, and that kind of makes them boring a little bit. A little bit boring I, when things are so like. 
the ramp is already set. Like, you know, you just know what to play. And it's like, there's not a lot of brewing there. You're just like, this well, is th- the best for this. I think, like, the current monocolor decks are boring just because, the so those three decks we just mentioned, the blue and then the black and then the, you know, control. The blue X, whatever. Yeah. Dude, they're, that's all almost all of the metagame. So it's, like, fucking boring. Well, there's yeah, there's, bit, there's bit. three king yeah. decks right well, control now. Control wasn't around for a while, like. I mean, Control's around, but it wasn't, like, a main key player. In, yeah, yeah, they had to until, figure it until out. Until now. Until now, I think Control's a really good, good position. But, I mean, for... like, it's just, it's it's boring. Yeah. So, I, I can't wait until things get shaken up to where there's a little bit more than just three fucking top-tier decks and everything is tier two. You no, know what I just know? hate? I hate Thought Seizes in fucking one of these, the, yeah. the sets, not in a core. They should have put M14 so they don't have to reprint it. Now we're, we're stuck with Thought Seize for like another like yeah. year and a half or whatever. No shit. I'm down with that. <laughs> oh man, I know, I know you all about that Thought Seize, but me is just, I, oh, I, that's harsh. I got harsh. four of them, so I'm good. That hurts, that hurts. Um, I think Mono Blue and Mono Black got a couple extra cards they can use. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not really that much ammo. I think uh, we're seeing a setup for Mono Green and Mono White decks. To emerge in the uh, set. White, white definitely got better. Yeah, white can, I can see white. Mono white is definitely good, especially if you pair it with, you know, you splash it with red for all the good uh, Boros, uh, like Boros charms, things like that. White um, has a fucking sweet, uh, like, mana, you know, like the, the ramp, you know what I mean? Like one drops, two drops, three drops. You mean the curve? Drops. The curve, oh, I'm curve. sorry. Yeah, curve. yeah, yeah. See, exactly. Why, why, ha- why has that's the shit? White has just that perfect curve. Yeah. There's so many options. Like, what twos do I want? What threes do I want? I don't know. There's so much fucking shit yeah. there. It's whatever direction you want to go. You want to go heroic? Do you want to go with, like devotion type stuff? You know, it's got a nice curve to the left. Do you want beat down? Do you want to control? Right, right, right. There's so much in there. It's it's fantastic. But I don't. You're right. It doesn't have it. Like it's not perfect yet. But there's yeah. just a lot of options. Yeah. You know, tons and tons of options. Okay. Do, okay. So let's think of like the tier two decks that are out there right now. I say red green's probably tier two right now. Red Green's it's probably about it's, it's, 1.5. It's, 1. 5. 5. it's 1. like, 5. it's almost there. I don't know the cards that are coming out. I mean, Xenagos could be a big factor. Xenagos. Is, uh, hey, is your Maze's end? Um, is the Maze's end? Is that like a one and a half? That's yeah. like a tier two. It's like yeah, a two. Yeah, okay, tier two yeah. is for me. Even though it, um, plays second at, uh, Vancouver GP. Right. Uh, yeah. cause this guy fucking, he fucked it up hardcore, but. Um, you mean his opponent playing against the Maze's End? No, no, the or? guy piloting the Maze's End deck fucked it up. He had the Cracking Promoter where you tap a gate, it deals one damage. Right. Um, he also had Detention Spears on the board, and he was trying to get rid of um, an enchantment creature with uh, Merciless Eviction. Ha! But the thing is, he accidentally said enchantments when he really meant enchantment creature, so he just should have said a creature. So he got rid of his Crackling the Primer and all his Detention Spheres. Ta! Because he said Enchantments. He first said Enchantments. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's yeah. definitely an aw, fuck moment. Oh, there was one. God. So good times, good times. He, he, he lost game two, and then he couldn't keep up in game three, so he lost. And he but committed he suicide like, shortly after yeah, that. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but, you know... Put that suicide hotline. <laughs> oh, I know. You better pin that shit to the top of the forums. <laughs> but in, like, a format with... Absolutely zero land destruction. It, it's hard to beat a deck like that. Yeah. It, as long as it can hit its its land drops. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what tier two decks do you think Go benefited from this set? Mid not cards. not Mace might Zen. not might rise up to tier one, but what like benefited? I think white green got got some ammunition. Yeah, with Celestia. like uh, of course yeah. pure fix. Yeah, I think yeah. that's gonna uh, really help out. It's Especially one- Brimaz. Bermez, yeah, uh, he's gonna help out. Um, I don't know. I, I, it's, I have to see it play out, like what people are gonna do, because there's yeah. people out there that are way, way better, better that's uh, building decks and knowing, like you know, how to build a tier one deck. So I mean, we'll have to see. But I mean, right now I feel red greens could benefit. Um, I don't. I think mono red. It's still. I think mono red's kind of been pushed it got, off. It got to a the tier little two. bit of ammunition in the set. Yeah, but it's uh, still nothing. ball of the hammer. Fall of the hammer's good. Yeah. It's like the best, like... What's that one, Dugan? It's uh, one red for an instant. Uh, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature. Right. So you're fighting like without fight, yeah. it. Uh, your opponent's creature dealing damage back. Yeah. I mean, that's good. But if you're playing a red-green, and you got big creatures... That's perfect. But that's, that's just sweet. ammunition for red-green. That's not ammunition but, but even for, red, for, for just... Um, right. I mean, it is, but it's more But red-green. doesn't have a but lot of... even for mono-red, like you have, like, an Ash Stella, or you have a Boros Reckoner out on the board. But these are all three These are all three drops, so you're the same thing as a Lightning Strike, or whatever, Lightning... Because that's, yeah. that's going to be to target player or creature. That's, like, flexibility... Unless you can hit it for, like, five or six, then I don't see it, get that getting played. 
I, I just think it's, it's a it's a good card to have a couple copies in because if you get to a point where they they have uh, bigger creatures on the board, you can effectively deal with it with Fall of the Hammer because you can block with it and then finish it off. Yeah, I think. Red, green, and white, green got the best out of this. Set. Yeah, that's they it. got the best tools. Everything else, everything else is already established, and they don't need it, or they just didn't get enough. Look, at, it's a foil, but you can like, barely tell. I like that's what, a foil. Fall I know, the hammer? I know, but you can barely see. Dude, it. that's one of the worst. You know what the worst foil I ever got was? Howl the Night Pack. Just the fangs on the wolf <laughs> are fucking foiled. Like nothing else is. Foiled. That is no. bullshit. <laughs> Needs to be fired for that. Dude, I pulled out. this foil out when I got my Kiora. I was like, yeah, Kiora. I'm like, oh, fucking foil, foil, <laughs> yeah. Maybe a foil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. What's this comic um, doing behind the mythic? That's weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking forward to see what the meta turns into if, if it changes at all. I don't, I don't see a shift. I think mean, Black's gonna still be like top dog. Control's still gonna be yeah. top dog. It's just. I, I think the black model black players are gonna fall into a trap though. They're gonna try and change things up and fuck it up. They're gonna no. They're they're there's black got a lot of good removal in the set, but the creatures are kind of subpar for what it wants to do. And I think they're just gonna be so removal heavy that they're not gonna have enough threats on the board. So I think that mono black didn't really pick up too much in the set. They have more like sideboard cards for niche cases yeah. and things like that. I don't um, think mono black or mono blue really needs to change anything. No, I think they're. I think they probably just I run think, the same exact shit. And well, I think still mono blue, sideboard cards. Mono yeah, blue is not going to be aggro as aggro heavy it is now. I think they're going to go more to a grindier type like mono black is. Okay. Especially you know you got um, uh, you got the good counter spells in blue. The devotion counter. The fastest rebuff one blue counter target the, spell. What is it? Nullify. Th- yeah, nullify. Sick. Um, the devotion counter that one. Sick. Yeah. And then you gotta have something thing like uh, faded infatuation, the blue blue blue. You create a copy of something, yeah. Um, and then you scry, which is, I think is really good. Now, how much how much uh, counter does mono blue play right now? Uh, it's only in the sideboard. Okay, so, so that would be the sideboard right? I was gonna say because uh, yeah. when you think about the devotion card, that Thassa, whatever, like it might not get it's not main board card right even though like it sounds awesome and you yeah. can like counter damn near any stuff you always have devotion yeah. but like when are you really going to play you don't want to waste that card you want to play something the creature well, cause, like, blue, they, blue is so curve based it has like the perfect fucking curve right, right. Right. every curve. time I play your blue deck it's like you just have this fucking perfect one, two, curve three, exactly. one two three four oh you're done yeah. and I'm like scrambling to like try and get my shit in fucking order well, I think this way with the counter spells and like with something like uh, with retraction helix it's a one instant uh, your creature Gain tap, return target, and online permanent to its owner's hand. Um, I think they're going to play one. a couple of these, and they're going to take out like the rapid hybridization. They're going to take out the mm. domestications and things like that, and play right. more of these cards to help protect its devotion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the devotion one thing with so the, the, the devotion with mono blue, I've always seen, especially with mono black in the format, is it's very uh, dependent on placing threats on the board. That's why they play Jace. That's why they play Biden. Along because they need some form of devotion well, even, minus creatures. That's why I think the counter spells are going to help out so good. So I'm going to be able to keep Dasa active all points of the game. You know, it's that, not going to be a back and forth. Yeah, turn Dasa off is kind of a big big deal. Yeah. What's that one? Uh, the one that uh, takes you know it takes the creatures and put it to you. It gives that gives two blue devotion. What? The one that the one that steals your opponent's creatures and brings yeah. you the the what's it called? It's uh, domestication. One? Domestication. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That one gives two blue mana. So that's a good yeah, card. Yeah. You know, take take a threat away. It's add good. Um, or take a block but away. But it doesn't mm-hmm. it doesn't yeah, yeah. like uh, them prevent them from like uh, using a combat trick on it just to get the blow up the domestication to okay. get that creature back. Um, I also saw a point where there was a mono blue versus a blue white uh, matchup in standard. Where the only guys, the only mono blues uh, line to get out of the situation was to domesticate Archangel of Thune, which works. It's a three four. It's not four power, but he can't do anything with it. He can't block with it. He can't attack with it because as soon as he does, he gets a four five, and then the domestication <laughs> falls off. Yeah. So it's so it's basically like, just like a pacifism, <laughs> pretty much. Like um, that's actually funny. <laughs> so like. Uh, I think those spells are gonna go out and these spells are gonna come in because I think the creatures are good and the blue doesn't provide too many creatures that fits in that, uh, that deck really. Mm-hmm. So, so I think it's just, they're gonna take out those type spells because, you know, it's, I'd rather have a counter spell that can hit all your creatures rather than, okay, I have to save this, uh, rapid hybridization for your de- uh, desecration <laughs> demon. Mm-hmm. That's the only way I can deal with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This way I have an option. I can deal mm-hmm. with this, or I can deal with that. You know. 
Yeah. Like an underworld connection. So like that that just blows Mono Blue out of the water because I can't deal with the card advantage. Especially if Mono Black runs Hero's Downfall, they can just downfall my Jace, and then there's my card advantage. Yep. Especially if we have like a Desecration Demon, I can't outpower and toughness it, so I can't rely on Biden. And then if so. you sack shit, then you lose your devotion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. Hopefully if you have Master out, you know, that's at least just a little bit of that. But that rarely happens, yeah, right? It's like yeah, never, exactly. almost never happens. Master's good, but it's just too fragile. It's Fuck like, yeah, it is. Uh, so, I mean, uh, so we covered uh, the new cards. We covered the uh, history of our, our magic. Um, we covered the meta game. The changing meta. Oh, I wanted to say that, yeah, after this, we are playing a draft. Oh, yeah, we're yeah, definitely well, drafting. Yeah. I'm actually kind of ready for the draft. Yeah, the draft sounds good. I'm ready anytime yeah. you guys I mean, are. is there any, anything else you'd like to add? Um, yeah. yeah you know, I, in the future, I want to talk more about uh, just a little bit more about other formats. I don't want to become like a... I, you know, I, I we'll talk about fucking anything on the podcast related to magic, but I want to dig into maybe like popper or like modern, modern or commander yeah. or commander I can do commander, a lot of commander. On, uh, <laughs> popper what about a cube oh, I, I want to build our own cube okay yeah, we'll listen, listen, I'd say proxy it no no listen to this idea okay so we should play a cube with like only cards that we've played with not like so old school uh, cards, but like build our own uh, like cube. Like starting from gate. Well, starting or from like M- not gonna have enough cards. Like M thirteen. What do you mean? No, it doesn't matter what the power level is. It's like just build archetypes. How big with is the cube? The How many? You gotta have three hundred and some cards for your cube. You have to have. Or we could go back to three. So you have eight sets of three boosters at fifteen cards each. Okay. So okay, how about this? We go back to M eleven so we can play with the Titans. So M11 till now. The Titans for your deck. <laughs> you want a great kitty. All right. Yeah, we'll have, we'll, we'll have to discuss this. <laughs> but I want to build some sort of cube. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm, I'm down with the proxy cube where we bring in all a the proxy, old school just cards. Like the 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 cube from Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah like the, the holiday cube. It. Like it that. Has all I want to create that proxy black lotuses. Yeah. Exactly. But I want to build Lots like rubies, you know. <laughs> I want to build like a cube from M11. Till like now, just so it's like mostly cards that we've seen and played with, and we're familiar with. But I think it'd just be fun to like, build, build our own, you know. I think you it, shouldn't replace a set restriction on it. You should just be like, these are the cards I want because it's cubes a very delicate thing where you have to make sure that you have enough archetypes for people to draft in, and that all the archetypes are kind of equal. And if you set yourself <laughs> on a certain set, you might. Force the archetype to be too good, and everybody's trying to get that, and then you well, destroy that archetype because. Well, then I'll just it. make the power level go down and buff they up. They don't need to be super cards no. either. I mean, well, I'm just saying it. it's, it's, it's one of those things. Or we can do a popper cube. It's always I think popper cube would be super. It's always going to be cube. like revolving. Popper You know, it's always going to be evolving. You might like okay, this one card's like too overpowered. Everybody's played or yeah, whatever, like, and then you change it out or you add something else that like lowers the the value of that card. Well, I want to. I like. I want to play with the old cards, but I want to play with like not so much those broken ass old oh, cards. Yeah. You know, like I want to I want to set like a, a standard, like see what I can do within these parameters. You know? I'm sorry, I want to put a fifteen fifteen in a play on turn one. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Tap tap untap eggs untap tap tap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you look at the eggs deck? No, I I watched it on oh, fucking. That sick. I watched like five minutes of it on uh, it was like Star City or some yeah. fucking thing. And I was like, that, like, I'm almost glad I didn't play back then, because that looks fucking boring as shit. It's like, okay, play land, and then I tap this, and I look at my library, and bring this out, and I untap this, and it's like, the guy's just playing solitaire for, like, five minutes. Like, I'll play by myself yeah. here. The other, guy's just, Come back. the other guy's just sitting there, like, oh, well, I hope he fucks up one of his steps, so then I can actually, like, play, you know? That, that, that's a combo deck, though. Nah. That's boring, though. That's a, that's boring. That's that, that's that's a no fun, I'll just watch you play Magic deck. That, that's yeah. a combo deck, though. That, that's, I'd rather that's play exactly fucking what Pokemon combo deck. at that point, <laughs> yeah. you know? I, 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 I'm going to my Game Boy real okay. quick. There is, so there's winning and then there's having fun. I'd rather play with my fucking dad's dick than fucking play. <laughs> okay, well, let me put this to you then. Would you rather play versus a combo, uh, play combo decks, where it's kind of like you're playing solitaire, or would you rather uh, play like these standard fair decks, where it's more about like play creature. Uh, okay, you play creature, attack with creature. Oh, your block combat trick. Yeah, 
I'd rather play that. You'd rather play that? You'd rather than the combo deck, like, oh, okay, well, I can't play my combo piece because uh, he's got this much mana, so I have to tap this much mana of his, and then I can play it. And, like, just interesting lines like that where you're always constantly thinking of head. You have to worry about, are they going to combo off this turn? Can I combo off on this turn? Part like, of that, I could say part of that it sounds interesting, but the solitaire thing really bothers me. Once, like solitaire, but once again, you're, you're you're playing against yourself and another person rather than just playing against another. Well, you still, still gotta get that fucking magical unicorn hand too. Once <laughs> again, I'd rather draw an eyes and a mouth on my dad's penis and then use it as a puppet than play. Oh, <laughs> I want to see this yeah. really. All right. You know what? Let's fuck video this. podcast. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, here let's we go. go. I think we need to end this and go over to my dad's house and, uh, you know, All right. feed him uh, some you, drinks you and see what happens. You guys, go get some penises. I'll play my solitaire game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you play with your eggs. That just sounds gay if you play with penises. Uh, so anyway, let me, uh, are you guys ready to draft? Yeah, I, I think, think we're ready to I get I think once this, we start making dick dog. jokes, we're running out of we're steam on, here. We're looking at 128. Not too All bad right. for the yeah, first podcast. Good, well, good. we always want to go over, because you don't know how much it's going to have to be edited out. Yeah, no, so you know, for the listener, like, uh, everything's uh, been edited. This is actually like a four-hour <laughs> They've podcast. just turned it off after the two yeah. minutes. Yeah. So I think yeah. if we go to two hours, it'll leave enough stuff for, like, at least an hour. I think most of this stuff was, we can leave in, you know, because yeah, I mean, yeah, this yeah. is... I mean, it. besides what we're actually saying right now about editing. No, this, nobody wants to hear us talk about too. editing yeah. what we're talking about. This is about. prime quality. <laughs> it's content. All right, content well, this creation. has been the fucking first episode of If Lands Could Kill. Uh, you know, we're going to try and get a fucking YouTube channel, website, uh, me. Twitch. Me, yeah, we got Twitch channels. I think everybody has Twitch channel except for Hot Sauce. Right, right, Twitch right. Channel. Nope. So we, uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll stream games, whether it's Magic or other stuff. But I like to st- whenever I draft online, I like to stream my drafts. Yeah, yeah just look around. And we'll have so, planes flying around with banners, you know. Yeah, like yeah, we'll have sky writing. Yeah, we'll have the the Goodyear blimp flying around. You'll open us. up a fortune cookie. It'll be like our website URL. Yeah. Follow the link. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the, uh, the, the the Q code or whatever those barcode things are. QR code. QR code. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, this has been our episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it and. And uh, I don't know how often we're going to do this. Maybe, like, try and do it once every two weeks, I feel. I think just, I, if we could every week. But, yeah, yeah it's but, but I think just, the goal is every week. The yeah. goal is every, is every week. But realistically, I think it's going to be every two weeks. Just because to get all four of us, it's or even fun. just three of us together, like, it's going to be Sometimes a Sometimes hard. Ass. So, you know what? Uh, just stay tuned for more episodes. And, uh, yeah, draft on. You know what we need? We need a sign-out, though. We need, we a, need sign a sign-out? Out? Sign- no, no. Not like that. Next time, we get, we can figure out a way no, to really just, like... Limited resources sign you know. No, we don't want to jack the limited resources. No, what is that? do, like... Well, just, he does this, like, funny rant at the end, like, whether it's, like... like the last he did, like, a poem, did, yeah. or he'll do, like, a... Stay classy. Plays like, the walkers. last one they did was, uh, he did one about the host... <laughs> Because the host uh, of Limited Resources does a lot of event coverage. So, okay, so if you want to, you ever see Marshall at, like, an event, you want to approach him, this is how you should go about it. First things first, always approach him at a 45-degree angle. <laughs> Second of all, you want to bring some sort of offering and always stand 20 meters from him. I, I bring the Snickers to honor your penis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, some, some, some random like that. I will come up with something good, but yeah. uh, no, we don't need it. I just, I just yeah. like having a little, little something. We're, you know, we're all gonna be, we're always gonna be talking and having, no. having a good time on the this. Sign on. It'd be nice. I like a little structure. Yeah, structure's yeah, fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you know, every, when we do the podcast, originally, what I'd like everybody to have like topics, and then you know, we create. Yeah, some bullet. definitely. Structure so like that is already. The, and then, like, I think the our sign off should be is just the bloopers of, from the podcast. The bloopers, okay. So, so like, like that. the sign off is just like all the stupid funny the shit that got cut. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll fade into, like, uh, Mariah Carey or something. <laughs> some seal. Exactly. Nice. Yeah, oh, some... Did you say some seal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or. Anyways, uh... <laughs> well. Yeah, we're gonna get out of here in draft, so, uh... This has been If Lance Could Kill. I'm Knife City. I'm a quickness. This is Reich. And Hot Sauce. And, uh, fucking play on, play on, players. Baby, I can to a kiss from a 